Hey everybody, it is late at night and I am Norman. It is time once again to look into the creepy eye of the watch industry. Just kidding. That was actually an allusion to one of the watches that we're going to be looking at tonight. In honesty, the news that I have tonight is all good news and all brilliant watches. So let us begin. The first article I have comes from Worn and Wound, and this is a write-up of a brand new Serica 5303. This is the COSC certified version. And the amazing thing about these watches is Serica is now using Soprod's Caliber M100 movement in them. And these movements are COSC certified. So this is really good news because these movements don't have the stem issues that the first 5303s had. Mine had that, and I had to send it in to get fixed. However, that was covered by Serica. And after seeing Just One More Watch's review of the 5303, where their stem was behaving far worse than mine ever did, and it sounded like at that point in time, Serica wasn't even offering to fix it for their customers, I became really concerned about the future of the brand. I love their designs, at least the 5303. I haven't seen their other watches in person yet. I would love to sometime though. But yes, I'm so glad they swapped out the movement for something else. Interestingly, this article didn't really specifically call out the crown issue. But then again, in the past, when I was trying to do research on what exactly the problem is, I kept finding that all over the place. None of the articles that I encountered at the time even mention the crown problem at all. It was almost like it didn't exist. Which might make sense if they were sent to watch to review that had already been fixed, but yeah. So good on Serica for this one, and I think it bodes much better for the future of the brand. However, these 5303 variants are a bit more expensive, by like $500. However, they do have greater anti-magnetic properties than the original batches, so that's cool. And it sounds like Sarek is doing a lot more quality control on the movements on their end as well. So, yeah, all good news on that front. Next up, we have an Urwerk watch that Monochrome Watches reviewed. And this watch is the UR100V, all in titanium. And wow, these watches are under $100,000. They're a steal at $58,000. What's crazy about these watches is they actually look wearable. I mean, I love me some Urwerk watches just for their uniqueness and crazy innovations and mechanical madness. But this watch actually looks really good on the wrist. It doesn't look like a gigantic machine from the future. It almost looks like a normal watch. Almost. So it has an octagonal case with some great texture on the sides of it. The dial and mechanism used to tell time is totally Urwerk style, but it looks great on this watch. And the integrated bracelet is kind of Genta-ish in a way. Almost Royal Oak or Nautilus style. But just look at those screenshots. This watch looks really good. On the wrist, it actually looks pretty thin. The case is only 41 millimeters wide. However, it is 49.7 millimeters from top to bottom. And the crown is situated at the 12 o'clock position. It's 14 millimeters thick, but like I mentioned in the wrist shots in this article, it looks thinner. But it's kind of cool to see an Urwerk watch for a little bit less money and a little bit more wearable. I like it. The next article I have comes from Monochrome Watches, and this is a write-up of the Fratello and Strom limited edition with the lava red dial. And this is the watch that I mentioned in the intro to this video. Look at that dial. That dial is absolutely amazing and kind of creepy looking. It looks like the Eye of Sauron or something. The texture on it is mind-blowing. I love its transition to a darker tone toward the edges of the dial. 
Or maybe that's just how the light is hitting it. At any rate, I love me some red dials. I really need to get a red dial watch that actually works. But more on that in a future video. The bracelet on these watches looks pretty amazing from what I can see in pictures. I like the markers and the hands and just the overall design of this watch around that crazy red dial. And the price on these isn't too bad at around $1,600. The case size on these watches is 39 millimeters. And it sounds like this limited edition isn't actually limited to numbers, but there was a certain window at which point you could purchase the watch. Sadly, that is in the past now. That window closed April 20th. But these are really amazing watches. I love that dial. The next article I have comes from watchtime.com, and this was a review of another limited edition watch, this time an Oris. This is the Diver 65 Caliber 400 Kronos Limited Edition. And on the subject of dials, look at this one. That is simply gorgeous. I mean, just look at the transition from the silvery blue in the center all the way out to the darker blue. That in conjunction with that box crystal, just looks so amazing. Usually I'm not a huge fan of all metal bezels. Oftentimes they just remind me of the 1990s, but this one was done really well. It's nice and crisp and kind of minimal and looks really good on this watch, at least in pictures. I love the Oris 65 divers. They're so cool looking. And this piece is a no date. This particular edition is limited to 200 pieces, but man, that dial is just really impressive. So many great dials tonight. The next two articles that I have are a little bit darker. First, we have a write-up on Patek Philippe's allocations. And this is an interesting article, because oftentimes when we're talking about not being able to get luxury watches, the discussion will be on wait times and potentially holding back stock or not producing enough watches to meet the demand. This article talks about where the watches that are out there actually go. So apparently Patek Philippe produces around 65,000 to 70,000 watches per year. That compared to Rolex, which does 1.2 million watches, AP, which does 50,000, and Richard Meal that produces merely 5,300 watches. But all of their ADs fight for these watches all over the world. So on their website, Patek Philippe lists 345 points of sale, and that's worldwide. And apparently, according to this article, that's going to drop down to 250. 37 of those are in the UK. In France, there's only one. China has two points of sale. Hong Kong has 11, Japan has 30, and the United States, which is actually the largest market, has 46. So all of these different points of sale are vying for the limited number of Patek Philippe's that are available. Very interesting. I like the way this article goes beyond just the sheer number of watches that are produced and or the wait times, wait lists, or having to deal with ADs. This actually kind of looks where the watches are distributed and each of these points of sale have to vie for those watches. Very interesting. Great write-up. This next little bit of news is actually just a listing that I encountered on eBay that kind of shocked me. I've always been amazed at the crazy high prices of the Ripley watch, the Seiko Jujaro pieces, but this one was something else. Now granted, the watch is listed as being never used. It comes with box and papers. It even has the sticker on the back. But this thing sold for $3,500 for a Seiko. I mean, they look brilliant. They were in the movie. They're iconic. $3,500. I just find that a bit amazing. That's all. And the last little bit that I have comes from an article that Warren and Wound did, and this was a write-up on a modular watch line, the Liberum DMD-001. So what's interesting is whenever I see modular watches kind of like these, 
You're mainly just getting different colorways, right? You can swap out the case color, maybe, the strap color. So I suppose you could collect a whole bunch of different case colors and just change those out according to your mood. But it almost feels like you could just go with a more affordable watch and offer all those different colors and you could just collect more than one, maybe? I don't know, what do you guys think about the idea of modular watches? Is this a gimmick or is it something that actually interests you to be able to kind of swap out a watch case for different colors depending on your mood? I don't know. Maybe if I saw these in person or something and had a chance to play around with them, maybe it'd be cool. I don't know. Then again, I don't think I need that many different color cases. Maybe one or two if anything. But yeah, modular watches. So that's gonna wrap up this batch of news. Thanks for watching.